Hi, my name is Kelly Ferris Lester, and I teach in the dance department. And um, I, uh, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. I know that many of you are probably sitting here going, "What? How can this dance teacher relate to the things that I teach?" But um, I'll start by saying that I teach a variety of classes. I teach um, a lot of dance appreciation, actually primarily by choice and by assignment. And I teach. Um, studio classes where I'm teaching technique and of course I'm working with dancers to hone in on their skills and performance and I teach uh, lecture ba lecture <coughs> studio based classes where um, for instance I teach a rhythmic analysis for dance class where we do both theory and movement to understand what how that helps their skills um, and I teach a composition class where we're making art and helping students really define their individual art artistic voice so I um, I wanted to start by saying when I came here, I think the best advice I got was from a colleague and she said, do what you do. And she kept saying that to me several times and it, and it, it really resonated with me, allowed me to um, know that I was here for a reason and that I needed to trust in my abilities and by doing that I could build upon my skills. And um, that was really beneficial. I think another thing that was important to me was to acknowledge that bad days happen in the classroom and that's okay and that tomorrow I will come back with a new approach, something else to see how I can start to engage my students in a new way, that I don't let that defeat me, that I let it um, propel me to discover something new. Um, last year I uh, led a workshop for the LEC called Thinking Outside of the Box, and so I, and I think I want to say that now because I try to approach my class as if I'm making art. I'm an artist, I love to make dances, I love to craft bodies in the space and movement, and so in that same way that I do that, I treat my classroom as if I'm making art. Um, and to do that, I have to be creative and I have to think outside the box and try to find a new way to go towards things. Um, as I started to reflect about my classrooms, I um, think I value three primary things. I value reflection. For me, it's really important for the students to take a moment to reflect on that, what they just learned so that they, so it will resonate with them. So, in a dance classroom, that's pretty easy. I can put them with a partner and say, tell your partner what you just experienced and why that, that helped you. Or tell them what didn't work, and I give them guiding questions. Um, in a lecture course, I can still do the same thing. I can offer some questions. I actually do a lot of things where I put the students in groups at their tables. So even in my dance appreciation class with 45 students, I have moments where they need to talk with the group before they actually present to the whole class. And I think that that interpersonal um, social interaction helps them feel more confident about what they're going to say to the teacher or to the rest of the classroom. I also value um, dialogue and experience over replication. Um, I guess you can probably imagine that that's specifically in my technique class where I don't want, I'm not trying to make 25 Kelly Ferris Lester dancers, I'm trying to find each of them as individual artists. And so I don't want them to just repeat what I did, but the same thing has happened, you know, when my exams in a dance appreciation class. I don't want them to just repeat what I've told them. And so I'm continually trying to find ways to bring that out so that they're thinking and reflecting. And then the, uh, the last thing I value is teaching the whole person. Um, for me, that's uh, thinking, feeling, sensing, and intuiting. That's a Carl Jung um, psyche theory. And so I, I bring those ideas into my classroom and, and try to ask myself if I have found opportunity to do all of those things. Did I give them a moment to think? Did I give them a moment to just sense inside and feel what was their emotional reaction to that? What was their social interaction of that? And just try, how did they make decisions in that moment? So those are just some things that are valuable to me. And I, I, I want to take a moment to talk about a couple of my classes because I think that'll give you a better idea. Um, I'm going to start with this dance appreciation class. I've been teaching that for probably over 10 years now, and I've taught in a variety of settings. I taught it where I was lecturing, and we would watch videos, and we would discuss what we watched, and we would that's how the, the class functioned. I taught it where I had 45 non-dance majors in a studio every single day, and they had to dance with me. Um, and now I currently teach it where I, I have both of those things happening, and it's been really important to me to understand that to have two different spaces for those. What I realized is I was actually doing lecture and studio work, but I was in the wrong spaces for them. So I have days where we lecture and we're in the classroom and they're prepared to watch videos, to discuss things, to take notes. And then I have days where we're in the studio where they're prepared to dance because if you just come in and say, everybody stand up and try this, 
I don't care if you're wearing a skirt or your nice clothes or you have something else later. They're not quite prepared and engaged in that. Um, but through all that research, um, I started to imagine another version of this course, an online version. And, um, but it was really important to me that in that version that there would be kinesthetic learning because that was an important part of my class. And so I challenged myself to see how I could bring the kinesthetic learning into the online version. So my online class functions um, with the lecture material, videos, with discussion boards, but then they also have to dance. And um, I imagine that this happens in a variety of ways. Um, the instructions, for they're called movement experiences, and I, I write out those instructions, and they start off really simplistic of just observing people. Can you observe yourself and what gestures you're making? Can you try to repeat that and put it in a sequence? So they're, you know, I imagine they're sitting at their desk and they're like, mm. What is she asking me to do? Oh my God! Right, and but they're but they're realizing that movement comes in lots of ways, and so they're they're interacting. And then they progress through the semester. Some of them they're they're walk maybe they're walking through their space and they're going up and down on levels. Maybe they're hopping around. It's it, it starts it's like play. I hope that it's playful for them, and I imagine it happens all kinds of ways of in their kitchen, around their desk, in their dorm room, or. Um, I don't know, there's a, or maybe they're even just visual, visualizing it, and I'm okay with that too, because then they're still processing what it is, and that's a way for them to connect to the lecture material. Later on in the semester, I do have a video where they get to look at a video and learn to dance that way, and that actually presents a challenge to them because they've gotten so accustomed to reading instructions and trying it that they have a really different experience in watching something and trying to emulate it. Um, so then from that, what I've realized is that I, um, both of these versions, my online version and my face-to-face, -face, really informed each other. Um, there are things that work really well in my online class that then I strive to see how they go into my face-to-face -face class. It's really amazing to me in the online class that I hear from every single student. And I hear from them on the discussion board and I hear from them about this movement experience. I come to know them in a, in a really intimate way because they're telling me about their children. They tried this experience with their children. They, their husband did this. They, I just get to know more details about them, and I hear from every student where in my other classroom I sometimes don't. And so then I try to figure out what are the ways that I can do that. One way is by having, I do a lot of group things where they talk, and then I go around and we do that, or they work with a partner. Um, but it's really an effort on my part to learn their names, even when I have 45 students, and to um, wait, you know, wait for them to answer the question and not answer it before I get impatient. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of it. Um, and then another course I have is just another example, and I'm not even watching my time, so I'm going <laughs> to just keep going. Um, I teach another uh, course that I mentioned already, the Rhythmic Analysis for Dance class. And um, I wanted to talk about this one. I've taught it. I'm in my fifth time of teaching this class. And it was a course where I felt excited to teach, but I inherited a syllabus, and I inherited a textbook, and I tried to teach it in the way that, that I had been given, and, but still trying to find out who I was in it. And it has been through a process of personal reflection that I've started to make this class my own um, and really given myself permission to, to try new things, to um, see what else might work, and um, to incorporate um, time where I lecture, where I teach symbols of music, where I, we stand up and try it. Uh, where we work at the group, where we work with a partner, but something where we're, they don't know, ever know what I'm going to do. I'm trying to constantly surprise them so they don't come in class and go, okay, we're going to sit and write on the board for 20 minutes, and then we're going to get up and do this. <coughs> Try to always change what we're going to do um, as a way to keep them engaged. And when I feel like they're not, not engaged, then I make them stand up and do something and then sit back down. I guess that's the uh, benefit of dance, <laughs> 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 that they're willing to stand up and do what I need them to try. Um, but I think in other disciplines, you can just imagine, like, what are, what, what are the other ways that you can just break out of the cycle when you see them zone out? Like, is there something else that you can just pop in on them that will make them engage in something else and make them wake up, even if it's just, like, turn to your partner and tell them what you just heard, <laughs> right? But something that's just going to help them, like, stop going from that oral place and engage in a different way. Um, and then I, the, the last thing for that class to offer was that I really... Um, what I think is a resonating thing in that class is that I built a final project that really incorporates all the skills I do in class. So I teach rhythmic notation. I teach them um, how to make dances to, 
to, to that. And then at some point, we kind of play instruments. So the final project, they actually have to write a score as a group. And they're given instructions for that. Then they make a dance where they're personifying each note in that. And then they give their score to another group who plays the score while they dance the score. And so I'm trying to take every skill that we possibly learned in that class and incorporate it into one project. And that's um, where I see the realization of their learning, when they actually have to apply it with everything at once, rather than separating all of the skills out. And um, again, this is just from my discipline, but I can imagine that if you just tried to see, what are the skills that I'm learning? How could this all come together uh, and be creative? That's where I'll end. <laughs>